Well, hey folks, I'm Josh. Welcome back to my shop. Today, we're going to make a carved wooden base. Now, what I'm doing here is I am just cutting out the rough shape in a piece of ash that's about two inches thick, maybe a little thicker. And that's a piece of wood from my property that I had to have cut down, and then I split that out of a larger log. And uh, the neat thing about this face is that it, you don't need a lathe to make it, um, but you can get some really unique shapes by roughing it out on the bandsaw like this and then doing some carving on top of it and then some sanding, of course. Uh, now, this won't really work for the type of things that you would need to have uh, water in the base for, um, but it would work for things like stems and dried flowers and fake flowers and stuff like that. And now here you can see I've put some layout lines on the shape after I roughed it out, just some center lines and things like that to kind of give me an idea of where I'm going to go. Uh, and the next thing I want to do is I want to drill the hole in the top while I still have a nice flat surface to work from. And I'm going to start out with a three quarter inch uh, Forstner bit because that'll give me a nice clean starting hole. And then I switch over to a spade bit because it's a much longer bit. Um, but it won't give me quite as clean of a cut. So um, I wanted to start with that Forstner to keep things clean at the top. And then I go down as far as that uh, spade bit will allow me to go, which, you know, obviously we're not hollowing out this whole base. We're just hollowing out a hole. Uh, something that we can stick the stems of some dried stuff into or some fake leaves or whatever uh, you want to put in there for decoration's sake. Now we're just sanding off the top and squaring off the bottom a bit because it's actually square to the sides of this design. Um, and then I'm going to use a roundover bit in the router here and just round over the hole in the top. And you can see I've already done it with a smaller, uh, I think it was a quarter inch, and then I jump up to a half inch one because um, I decided I wanted a little bit bigger roundover. But that works really well. And then I clean up with a little bit with the knife and then a little bit of sandpaper to just clean that so it has a nice smooth look to it. This is a Powertech turbo plane and of course you don't need one of these to create these kinds of shapes. You could do this with knives, a draw knife, um, you could rough it out with an axe or a hatchet or whatever your technique is, but uh, this turbo plane makes really quick work of the wood. Um, you just got to be careful with um, grain direction because you can get some weird tear out on this. But um, I like to use that thing and of course, I like to take it outside because chips fly everywhere. Uh, and then this is a Shinto saw rasp. And if you don't got one of these, these are awesome. You can pick them up. They're about 20 bucks. And you can really hog off a lot of wood. It's got a, uh, a rough side and a fine side. And it's great for rough shaping. And it works in place of a rasp. And I love it. They're great. And now my next tool of choice here is just a cabinet scraper um, or card scraper. Everybody's got different names for those. Um, but as long as you got a good sharp one, you can peel some nice shavings off of there and you can work on some kind of irregular shapes with those because you can get all kinds of different shapes and sizes of scrapers. And I just kind of switch around between a couple of different types uh, to get different shapes and smoothing out some of the spots on there. And then I've got a big knot there that you can see that I want to fill some of that void. And those are just chips from what I've been doing with this piece of wood. and stuff them down in there and then I start with some thin CA glue, work my way up through the medium and the thick. Uh, theory being that the thin stuff kind of pulls the thicker stuff down into the wood but you get a nice coverage up on the top because you switch to the thick. I don't really know if that's necessary. You probably could just do thick and be fine but that's what I got and that's how I've always done it. And then after I get that thick on there I kind of zoom in here to show you how much uh, glue I got gobbed up on top of there which is really not a really big deal because as soon as it's dry, which doesn't take long, uh, you could use activator and be ready to go in just a couple seconds. But uh, I let that dry overnight because I had the time and I was done in the shop for the day. And then I used the chisel to kind of take off a big chunks and a scraper to smooth it down a little bit. And now I'm going to kind of shape the top the way I want it a little bit. It wasn't quite regular so I'm using a knife and a draw knife to just remove some shavings to get it to a shape that I like. That's looking good. Then over to the sander, and this is an oscillating spindle belt sander. I like this thing. They're, they're really well reviewed. Lots of people have them, and uh, they, I do recommend them if you're looking for something of that type. It works great. Then a little bit of orbital, random orbital sanding and a whole bunch of sand sanding. Then raise the grain to get that to pop up a bit with a little bit of water and let it dry. One final sanding with 280 and I am gonna be ready for the finish coat. And my finish of choice here is this polycrylic uh, clear satin. Um, maybe not everybody's first choice, but it's what I had around and so it's what I'm gonna use. Um, it probably won't discolor or anything like that. And I did the first couple of coats with it laying flat on its flat like that, because uh, I, I find I get a little bit less streaking. And then I go over each coat with this 3M, uh, these painter's pads that they have. 
uh, the gray ones. They were great. They just kind of rough up the surface a little bit. And then you clean that up, get all the dust particles and stuff off of there with a little bit of water and a rag, and then put another coat on. And I think I did three coats. I did two on its side like this on each side, buffed it a bit, um, sanded it a bit with those pads, and then I did my final third coat uh, with it sitting vertical like this. And even with doing that, I still got a little bit of streaking, which you'll see in a moment when I pick it up here when it's dry. And there you can see when I turn it, the light will catch, and you can see some of those streaks and drips. But that's okay, because I'm going to hit those with that pad again, which if you were going for a perfectly clear finish, you wouldn't want to do that. But I kind of like it a little bit of a matte finish, and so... Uh, hitting it with that pad just takes the sheen off a little bit and then also you can use it to get rid of some of that streaking and stuff which is you know amateur's way of getting a better finish so turned out pretty good and here you can see in just a second I'll set it up with just some dry uh, I think they're fake eucalyptus stems that my wife had um, there you go and that looks pretty good and then I actually made a second one and a little bit different shape a little bit different tool set but both are great designs and uh, not hard to achieve you could do this easy the hardest thing is having a piece of wood big enough um, so that's two inch ash that I used for both of those and um, it's actually out of the same log that I split out of a larger tree which something that's two inches thick is a little rough to find in like a hardware store but you could glue up two boards I suppose if you wanted but the best way to go is to find a larger log and then split out a big piece for yourself to use so anyway, I uh, hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching, and uh, if, you know, leave me a comment, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. That helps me out, and I hope you're having a great day, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back on my next video. Have a good one.